Alrighty, it's 13 hours and just about 45 minutes into the day of Thursday, March 8th, 2012, and it's time for Comments X. Well, finished another successful uh, broadcast light of last night of the news. Uh, still uh, going to be working for tonight's episode, uh, in addition to uh, working on everything else. Uh, it is turning out to be a really interesting thing where now I'm, it, rather than uh, writing out everything I'd be sort of uh, writing out, is now going up on YouTube and is being pushed out as video rather than uh, a paper. So I looked at, you know, one of the, the things though is that the research hasn't dimmed at all what has happened actually is that uh, getting back into uh, uh, journalism again. Uh, I had done a test in 2009 to see whether or not I could do, you know, this was sort of the test to see whether or not the random walk and the techniques I use in physics and astronomy would work in journalism, and I found out that they did. So it took me, uh, there's another, th you know, three years of testing uh, to get to the point where it is today where I can go on the uh, on uh, YouTube and uh, produce the shows the way I do. But there's still, an, uh, for myself, there's still an enormous learning curve where you have to learn how to think very quickly and make sure that your speech is in the proper uh, called cadence and that's so that uh, people don't get too lost in what you're saying but it's hard because you you also want to say the right things and sometimes uh, if you're not careful you could say the wrong things but you also have to keep in mind that even when you're saying the right things that you may not always have all the information there, and so that the next broadcast you need to go back. In, in if the if the if the uh, the um, events are still occurring, you need to sort of clarify uh, what you were talking about in your position and bring in some of the new information that you found out. And so this is it's it, it, it's a process. It, it, what I find in journalism from the scientific perspective, it's the same type of process where you're continually inching forward to the truth, to what's actually going on, even though you're not there. This is sort of, this is where journalism uh, sort of crosses lines with uh, forensic analysis, uh, crime investigation, uh, anything that, that's sort of, anything that requires good research, uh, Knowledge is an absolute. Knowledge is simply approached, and this is sort of uh, uh, my perspective of things. I went out today. Uh, this is why uh, a common sex is so late. I ended up going food shopping uh, with my dad. Uh, I was too tired to go walking up, so I ended up going hitching a ride with my dad to go food shopping with them. And there's a school nearby, and as uh, we were there just around lunchtime, and I finished pretty quickly, so I sat outside and uh, just waited for them. And as in the story, you had this parade of uh, uh, school kids go by, and you, it, it's, it's brought me back to my days where when I first started doing a lot of my research. And I went from watching the gorillas in the zoo, in the zoo and looking at the different stars in the skies of, for types of different stars. Uh, to watching human beings and the way they behave. Uh, basically, I took the same observational skills I did for astronomy and at the zoo into the mall and began watching human beings. So that, that, that many years ago, f f f part of my research into behavior science for uh, uh, cyborgs and cybernetics. Uh, this is the whole goal of creating um, a I call the cyborg would be a semi-sentient being, and this uh, and um, cybernetic would be for the android who is that is fully sentient. <laughs> <sighs> 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 
But you know, I ends up in, in a, you end up no matter how it t turns out, you end up good or bad. You end up studying long, long hours, and this is the fatigue that sort of creeps in there, and you got the the blurry eyes and the uh, the, the messy appearance and uh, you know the frequent yawning due to the levels of exhaustion that sort of exist. Um, what else is there? I went by and I w uh, saw uh, there's this new project I'll call Project 12 that uh, tries to promote people vlogging every single day. Well, I did this. I got an email from the guy. I signed up to it and I don't really see myself on there anywhere, so I have no idea what's happening with this Project 12, whether it's something uh, real or whether it's spam or whatever it was. Uh, I just don't really, I don't really, uh, I, I'm kind of leery of these things when people come up with projects to do, particularly if there's terms and conditions that you have to sort of agree to. That there's, you know, you sign up, oh, no, problem. you just click here and sign up. And now at the bottom you see terms and conditions and, and terms of service. Well, if it's something that we're all going to be hanging out and doing together, why are there terms of service and terms of conditions, you know? That really doesn't make sense to me. So I, I tried it out anyways. Uh, I, I didn't put out any money or anything like that. So we'll, let's see what happens with it. I'll give it about a week, and if uh, nothing comes of it, then... Uh, Excuse me again. We'll just simply move on. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm going to try. Uh, f uh, today I have to uh, start the uh, filming for uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix Detail and for Cyborgs and that Cybernet. So that hopefully I'll get that done. I also have to do tonight or tomorrow. I have to do the uh, GIF for uh, Write and Proper Lays. That's the exclusive um, uh, Harry Potter. And this is going to be this documentary that I'll be doing. And it's, it's actually pretty interesting. I've done the layout for the Write and Proper Ladies uh, little gift there. I'm going to keep it short this time. So I'm going to tr try to keep my Write and Proper Ladies things to about five minutes. Uh, I've got it laid out to do that, but we'll see if I can actually stick to that point and get everything in there. And I should be uh, trying to go around and see. Like, like I went by, I check every day with certain with certain YouTube channels every day. I like I check Cassandra's uh, Nerds RL channel every day, and she wasn't there yesterday. I'll see if she's here today. Um, she, she, what she has, she's been sh showing her move. But the daily vlogs are kind of behind. And I see uh, Megan Hartley is still out there and doing her a little bit. And I saw the whole Coney 2012 thing pop up and I went and looked at it. And while I agree with the premise, and this is what I stated in the news last night, and I'll pay more attention to it, uh, give it more uh, airtime tonight. Uh, the problem that I have with uh, Coney 2012 and a lot of these uh, um, YouTube awareness campaigns is that when you go and do the background research to see one who the person is doing this and then what they actually achieve and get done what I find more often than not is that most of these charities, most of these organizations don't do anything at the end of the day. Nothing is ever achieved. There is a lot of hype in the beginning, a lot of fanfare, but after the smoke and all the show ends, and you ask yourself, what have you achieved at the end of the day? The result is nothing for the person who was hoping something would get done, but for the charity of these people who who put on the show, they may end up, they end up making a lot of money. This is true for 
most of the charities when you see for health and whatever, most of these charities don't put most of their money towards uh, research. They only put, uh, the most I've ever seen is 20%. That's the most I've ever seen, 20% of whatever they bring in goes to research. The rest of it either goes for salaries, and the average salary uh, of the charity board, and this is the ones who primarily run the things, everyone else is pretty, pretty much volunteer after that. The charity board, uh, their average salary is $150,000 to $200,000 a year. Uh, this does not include the perks, the travel bonuses, and everything else. And basically, uh, so if you're only spending at the most 20%, and I've seen a lot, I've seen uh, <laughs> even cases of these sort of these lo uh, these loan lending places, these called these micro loans, that are sort of you know promoting this uh, help the poor type of thing. When you actually look at their balance sheets and look at how much they're actually lending out, what they're actually doing, you find out that, uh, and I've checked into several of them, these are the more popular ones, uh, they're actually only lending out 1% of whatever they bring in. So let's say they bring in a million dollars worth of donations. Of the donations that you're giving, let's say dollar for dollar, only one penny out of that dollar is going towards lending. The rest of it is going towards the people who run these things. It's towards their perks, their, the, you know, they, they, they spend an enormous amount of money, they spend 99 cents out of every dollar donated on themselves. So this is my concern where I see cherries and I see, you know, uh, Hank Green has come up with this, uh, this project from this was sort of my complaint before about Project for Awesome. Checkbook, checkbook charity doesn't do anything because most of these charities don't do anything to begin with anyways. They spend less than 10% of what's donated on what they're supposed to be doing. The same thing occurred with Haiti. I mean, all you have to do is look, talk to people who donated to Haiti and ask them what happened to all that money that was donated to Haiti for the earthquake relief. So this, this, is, this is sort of my beef about, you know, about the sort of bandwagon idea of getting everyone, everyone involved in paying out checkbook charity. Uh, they need to sort of, you know, you really need to sort of look at who's doing what and what you're giving to. Now, it's not a b problem if, if you've got money and you want to give 10 bucks. Not a, that's not an issue. But I'm talking about if you're putting on an X amount of time and you're expecting a result to come from these things, then don't hold your breath because that's never going to come because these places that are soliciting, soliciting for money, including the Hank Green's project, don't do anything. Most of the money goes to themselves. There's a 10% at the most I've seen uh, on average. I mean, I've some, seen some places do 20%. Uh, and when I've looked at their books, where most places do, uh, on average, a maximum of 10% of their funds go to, or whatever they collect, go to the actual research or anything that to be, to be actually done. Most of the campaign is on and funds are for awareness. And that's all they're there to do is make you aware of something. They're not actually there to do anything about it. They're simply there to make you aware of it. And this is sort of what's happening with the Coney 2012 things. This is more of an awareness campaign. There really isn't any um, teeth behind it. There's also uh, other issues that are behind the scenes that are not being actually brought out with the Coney tw uh, 2012 campaign. So, 
I'm not real. I'm not really dealing with Coney 2012 here uh, on this channel. I'll be dealing with it more on the news in depth. So if you want to know more about Coney 2012, uh, go to the news channel on on INN. Uh, that's in the, on the feature page uh, down below. That you see where all my channels lined up. You'll see the channel INN or Internet Network News DE. That's the channel uh, every night around midnight there's uh, the, the the end of the day broadcast uh, where I go over the summary of the headlines and I go behind the headlines things that you may have that are n really never seen on mainstream media broadcasts so this is where I'm, I'm, I'm coming from on there and this is where I'll be dealing with the coin 2012 so otherwise, uh, I will be uh, putting out some more uh, videos today as I get my day more organized and get the uh, the uh, used to the work schedule for the news. Uh, I will be putting out some more videos later on today. All right, I'll uh, talk to you in a bit.